the door for the video. I'm pretty sure this is the 100 video I've done. That that's good. If it's not, just believe. Just just use your imagination. If it is, and what to do? And you YouTube ranking? No no no. Okay, I yeah, go to this track your analytics. Go to my channel. Yada yada yada. Don't care about these. 98 uploads, it should say 99. I don't even know at this point. Uh, future projections. Hope well, we're not getting 100 subs anytime soon. These are videos. 50 most viewed videos. Oh! 152 views. Stop! Looks like you like creepy pastas, so. Oh! Creepy pastas for Max and Ruby because that show was lit. Oh, here we go. Max and Ruby is 0004. Look at it, it looks pretty nice. Not too long. So, you know, I wouldn't just be talking into the microphone with a mundane voice for 20 minutes and it's not too short. And hey, it's about a children's TV show. Like Blue's Clues. Alright, let's get all this. It was just this Christmas that went by and things were getting busy. I had to start buying presents for the family. I had finished shopping, but I still needed to grab a present for my little cousin. She's not very hard to shop for since she is four. She likes things like Peppa Pig and My Little Pony. She really liked, and I say liked for a reason, Max and Ruby. So when I decided to go looking for a present, I figured something like a Max and Ruby DVD would have been perfect. Since she liked to watch it on a daily basis, However, Christmas meant that most of the online DVDs were sold out at most places. I went to look on eBay as well, but figured I could not trust what condition the DVDs would have been in. So I was stuck in a rut for a while until the package arrived. I was at home, still scrolling for a stupid DVD, until I heard the sound of something being pushed into my letterbox. I caught hold of it before my dog did, and looked at the package. It seemed to be wrapped fairly badly with what looked like grease marks and stains on it. Naturally, like anyone would, I decided to open the package. Inside was something I could not explain. It was a Max and Ruby DVD, but it had, but I had not seen one like it online. It was like some little kid had drawn on the front cover with a marker. The title was just Max and Ruby, with what, with what looked like a poorly drawn illustration of Max and Ruby. On the front, there were no names or anything, but on the back it had a list of four episodes, all with blunt titles. Episode zero zero. Okay, yeah, you get it. I'm not gonna say zero twelve times. I gave the DVD a watch over, and to my surprise, the episodes were all perfect quality, and seemed to have no flaws. It was as if the, it was a real DVD, just with a homemade cover. The only thing I thought was odd was the episode selection screen. The episodes and names. But they were called all Max and Ruby 1, with the numbers being changed as it went down the list. The actual selection dream screen was just plain white screen with black text and the episode list and nothing else. After giving it much thought, I decided to change the cover to something a little nicer by printing out a DVD cover that I found on Google and tracked down the names of the episodes so they were labeled right. I left the episode list screen alone. Because I figured it was self-explanatory. Christmas Christmas went by and things were fine. I did, and she was happy with it all through Christmas. But that was only because she had not watched it yet. On Boxing Day, the family had gone out for a meal and left me to babysit my cousin. I was not too bothered about being left at home. I figured now was a good time to put on a DVD for her. I put the DVD in and let it play while I was in the kitchen eating my dinner. From what I could hear, she had watched episodes one to three so far. I was just about to finish off my noodles when I heard my cousin screaming from the other door, dropping everything. I had ran into the living room and saw my cousin curled up on the floor screaming. I looked up at the TV and I felt my heart in, in my throat. What I caught a glimpse of was the most horrifying things I'd have ever seen. It was what appeared to be a frame of Max and Ruby standing next to each other in complete darkness. But what made it so horrible was their lack of faces. They had lost their nose and mouths, 
and their eyes were replaced with big black holes. Their colors were disgusting, blood red, and there was faint static in the background. The sound was replaced with the with what sounded like the Max and Ruby theme playing backwards, while the faint sound of static in the mix of it all. It had to be the most disturbing thing I have ever seen, and it must have been on the screen for at least 20 seconds before the screen went black and the DVD turned off, which alone was weird because DVDs do not usually turn off by themselves. I was able to call my cousin down, telling her it was not real, and she had just had a nightmare as she had fallen asleep in the front of the DVD. However, I knew in my mind it was completely real. My parents had rung me up and told me that they were going to be out all night, so this was the best opportunity to look at the DVD more closely. I did not mention it to them, and as soon as the hung up, I grabbed the DVD and stuck it on my laptop. As soon as it loaded, I noticed that episode 0004 had been replaced with R.I.P. Mommy and Daddy, which sent a deep chill down my back. Since my cousin was now asleep, I plugged in my earbuds so he could sleep, can sleep, without having to hear anything. Normally, an episode of Max and Ruby would have three short stories, but this episode only had one. It started off quite lighthearted. Max and Ruby were playing tag in the garden, and their parents were on the porch watching them play. However, something was off. The sound was playing in reverse, and the parents' faces were that of sadness. It panned to the mother and father in it, and a deep voice of sorrow from the father's spork spoke. It's such a shame, he sighed. It then cut short to the sound of static and a, a loud scream, followed by the, the sound of two people choking. The sound felt so real. It made me almost physically sick. The scene then switched to Max and Ruby standing in front of what looked like a gravestone label of R.I.P. Mommy and Daddy. The two of them had no faces. At this point, there was also no sound apart from faint static. The scene remained on screen for about a minute and a half before it cut away into black. It then changed scenes. It then changed scene again, now showing Max and Ruby sitting in Ruby's room. Both of them were sobbing. The sobs were so realistic and heart-wrenching that it sounded like it was taken from a real person mourning. What happened next was probably the most disgusting yet saddest thing I have ever witnessed. The scene had changed to Max sitting in his room. He was standing on a chair with a noose hanging from the ceiling. He had brought it around his neck. The scene, fa the scene faded into black and the static got louder almost instantly and then cut to Ruby walking on her brother. She left out a gut-twisting scream. The camera was panned on her face as the sound of the chair began kicking and the same choking from before it began to play. The picture of Ruby's face stayed on screen for a good five minutes. This time her eyes had turned, had returned in the same gaping holes. Ruby then started crying, and as before, there was no other facial features. The static slowly, ro slowly grew louder and drowned out the sound of her cries. The scene cut to black with static. When the screen returned, Ruby was standing now on her own in the garden by the two gravestones. One landed R.I.P. Mommy and Daddy, and the other R.I.P. Brother. She then started to look at the camera with glowing blue pupils to speak to me. Well, whoever's watching this, it's because you've never watched any of me and my brother's episode. So one of these days, you'll regret this. The screen had faded to black afterwards. At this point, I had already been sick and was sitting all shaken. The episode had seemed to have come to an end at last. As the Max and Ruby theme song played slowly in reverse, I was about to eject the DVD when the same image came up like it did on the TV. This time, however, there was a text above the two rabbits that said, Death is your only release. There were no credits or anything. It stayed on this for a few seconds before the DVD finally popped out of my laptop. I sat there trying to contemplate what had happened. In my shock and fear, I made the stupid decision to break up the... To break the DVD up as much as I could before leaving the house, shoved the peaches, pieces down the drain. Thankfully, I kept a few screenshots and saved them to my laptop. The next couple of days went past without anything unusual happening. I had a few nightmares about the DVD, but luckily that was all. My cousin had gone back to back home along with the rest of my family. It was a late night, and my parents had gone out for dinner, leaving me to watch TV. I heard what sounded like 
someone posting something through the door. At this point, the DVD had left my mind since I had not told anyone about it. However, it all came flooding back when I looked down at the letter in front of me. It was just messily folded up, and it read, Death is your only relief. Well, that is the creepypasta reading. Hope you enjoyed. 100 videos already. Yeah.